Lift off in five, four, three, two, one, zero. And lift off. Welcome to the sunny east coast of Central Florida. Take a look around you. Back here you can see part of the mobile launcher. Over here is the crawler. And back behind you, that's the vehicle assembly building. Formerly the home of the space shuttle, this facility is now called the Commercial Crew and Cargo Processing Facility, or C3PF, and it has been repurposed by Boeing. We're proud to have them so close as they prepare to launch humans in support of the Commercial Crew Program. The Commercial Crew Pro Program, or CCP, is focused on launching humans safely to the International Space Station with our partners, Boeing and SpaceX. Hi, I'm Rachel Power, and today we're gonna to get an up close look at the CST-100 Starliner, Boeing's crew capsule. CST stands for Crew Space Transportation, and the 100 refers to the Kármán line. That's the common reference to the point where you've left Earth and you're now in space, 100 kilometers up. Now, let's go take a look inside. This is the location where we once processed and stored space shuttle main engines, and now it's being used for the Starliner service module. These engineering masterpieces come together piece by piece, starting with a giant metal cylinder waiting just beyond that wall. Once they make their way in here, the process includes installing and testing all of the systems needed to support Starliner flight. This includes electrical, life support systems, communications, fuel systems. The actual capsule, which we'll go take a look at in a minute, will eventually be attached to the top of this element. The two will stay connected through docking at the space station and then separate before the capsule enters Earth's atmosphere to return home. We're gonna go take a look in the high bay to see if we can look at another service module that's further along in processing. We are inside the high bay where the crew capsules are assembled. And if you take a peek behind you, you might get to see some of that. But first, let's take a look over here because this is a service module that is currently undergoing testing. On the outside, you might notice some pink wrapping. Those are rocket nozzles, and these are used to steer a spacecraft while it's in space. In orbit, there's no up or down. There's no left or right. You can't turn a wheel or steer like you'd drive a car or ride a bike you have to actually use another physics principle. You remember, for every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction. So if I want my spacecraft to go that way, I fire a small burst of propellant in the opposite direction. So if the action is to fire that way, the reaction is the spacecraft shifts this way. You might also see underneath the, the spacecraft, it's actually kind of hard to tell from this angle, but there are four larger nozzles. These make up the launch abort system. If there's an emergency before or during flight prior to reaching orbit, these ignite producing nearly 40,000 pounds of thrust each to safely move the crew away from the rocket. The capsule then deploys parachutes to return the crew safely to Earth. By integrating the launch abort system into the service module, we actually don't carry any extra weight and fuel. If the fuel's needed for an abort, then you're not going to need it on orbit. And if it's not, then it's used for the orbital maneuvering system rockets, the thrusters you see on the side. Now we're going to take a look over on the other side of the high bay to see how these crew capsules come together. Take a moment to look around you at all of this cool space hardware. You have the back shells over here. Behind you is the NASA docking system, the airbags, the forward heat shield. What's important to remember is that the Starliner crew capsule isn't just used to bring astronauts into space. That's only half the job. The same capsule must also be used to bring the astronauts home safely. One of the final steps in preparation is installing the Boeing Lightweight Ablator, a specially designed heat shield used to disperse the heat by going through a phase change from solid to liquid. This creates a buffer from the high temperatures of reentry, which can reach up to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The heat shield will not be reusable, but it does protect the capsule and everything and everyone inside. 
after it goes through the hottest part of re-entry, the space capsule has slowed considerably from its initial speed of almost 17,000 miles per hour. Then a series of parachutes will deploy designed to gradually slow the descent to about the speed of a, descent, a descending elevator. The final stage of landing is inflating giant airbags, the ones behind you, which will help to cushion the landing even further. Once the astronaut crew is safely on the ground at one of our five landing locations across the western United States, crews will drive out to help them safely egress from the capsule. Barring any unforeseen circumstances, the capsule will be able to be reused up to 10 times. Part of the reason the Starliner is reusable is that it was designed to land on land. It's the first and only American orbital capsule which is able to do so. Afterwards, the capsule is brought back here to the Kennedy Space Center where it will be readied for flight again. It's docked to one of the service modules, moved to that back room again, where it will be sealed off and fueled for flight. It's just a few short miles out to the launch pad, and that's where its journey to the space station begins. We're gonna leave you with one final look inside the Starliner mock-up trainer at the Kennedy Space Center Visitor Complex. You're getting a chance to feel what the astronauts will experience when they strap in and prepare to blast off into space. Alan Shepard unlocked a new frontier by being the first American to fly into space. Bob Crippen and John Young unlocked a 30-year legacy of living and working in space by being the first astronauts to fly aboard the space shuttle. And this, this is where we unlock the future of commercial space travel. We'll see you next time as we prepare to launch America. Hi, my name is Steve Stitch. I'm the Deputy Program Manager for the Commercial Crew Program. Thank you for taking our tour. Yeah.